access. Colonel O'Neill did, sir. Great. Why wasn't I told about this? Well, I believe a memo was sent, sir. Uh, t oh, <clears throat> hello. I'm Dr. Fraser. This is General Hammond. Welcome. Uh, pleased to meet you. Now, we understand that Colonel O'Neill has given you permission to view some highly classified information regarding the Stargate. Look, this isn't normal operating procedures. Usually, we'd go through government red tape before you'd even get within 100 miles of the SGC. Uh, with all due respect, sir, I, I wouldn't worry. I mean, they look harmless. Right this way. Okay, here you go. We'll check back with you a bit later. Now, this is highly classified material. Yes, so please be sure not to touch anything. Sir? James Stitcher, I'm the visual effects producer on Stargate. This is a uh, breakdown of how we do visual effects shots from Dead Man Switch. We needed to put this spaceship behind the green of the trees on the set. You'll see here, this is the original plate, but this was a cliff that was about 35 or 40 feet high, and we had to balance this blue screen precariously over the edge of the cliff. This is an element that we then shot on our stage of the interior of the cargo ship. You'll see the orange tracking balls, so we actually track the camera as it lowers down on the set, but then apply that to the model. And you can see here there's a wireframe and then a, what's called a low-res polygon render, and then our closer final render of the ship. And now this is the shot cut into the sequence. And you'll see if you look closely at the ship, as it rises, you can look in the windows, you'll see the guy looking at us, but more importantly, you'll see the perspective shifting on the inside of the ship and that's real, everything around it is CG. So we actually blend the real set in with the CG spaceship. In this shot, we had to create a CG snake that gets snapped in half. So what we did is we hung a prosthetic piece that our alien man could grab, or Unas could grab, and then we had to paint it out. You see in that plate, painting it out. And then this is the CG element. Uh, you can see the black part is where the hands go. And then uh, we put it into the shot. Um, and timed it all with the grab so you have something real and something fake. This was a tricky shot. We needed to give the sense of speed, being a fast uh, superhero creatures. Uh, or actually, they're not creatures, there are heroes with superhero powers all of a sudden. Um, that was the background plate for one side of the shot. We actually shot two sides of the plate. We shot two cameras next to each other, did all the action. And then we had stand-ins of our lead characters run through the set and mime where they were hitting the, uh, the Jaffa guards. Then we had to tile the two plates together because we wanted to do a pan. So what you're seeing there is a clean plate where we painted out all of the various actors and extras and rigging and all of that stuff to create the pan. This is a CG Stargate. 
and also the puddle element. We always render the puddle elements flat and then actually put them in uh, tune dimensionally to fit the perspective of the shot and gives us a lot more control. And that's your streak element and a time warp on the actors running from the gate and uh, streaking through the shot. One of the tricks to the streak was using previous frames of the actors and leaving them on the screen long enough so that they they really f it feels like that streak is coming from the actors and that's the final shot one of the tricks uh, that we need to rely on um, sometimes is uh, stock footage and this is a stock footage photograph of Moscow we couldn't obviously fly to Moscow and shoot some plates of people so what we did is we took a stock photo painted out the people that were in the photo and then added some of our own people. Um, all of these people actually work in the visual effects department. Uh, that's Shannon uh, Gurney, one of our coordinators, and um, an undefined person who I'm not sure who is, and Michelle Cummins, and uh, Ted actually is uh, one of our camera assistants. And they're on green screen, and so what we do is we take them and shrink them down and put them into that stock photograph and now we have movement in the frame that we didn't have before and suddenly it's starting to feel like it's coming alive add a bit of grain and you actually have what looks like a frame that might have run through a motion picture camera at some point and then we had a bunch of elements uh, these were timing explosions uh, stock footage again of uh, explosions that Bruce Woloshin tamped in so that we could sort of get our timing of what happens and what event at what point and then um, with a lot of fine tuning and a lot of uh, CG additions and a big white flash at the end, you have yourself a shot of Moscow blowing up on the economical, we like to say. This is a foreground plate we just shot a few days ago from our first episode, Enemies. Um, this shows uh, a practical set that's being built for the engine room of the Guauld mothership. We have two plates here. We shot two tiled up, top and bottom. This is going to be a set extension where I virtually extend the set in 3D. And what we'll do is bring this into Photoshop, which I have open now, and what we'll be doing is we'll be tiling these so that we can do a virtual camera move. And this is where I can start to manipulate the images and remove the distortion inherent in tilted up camera angle. And as I go, I can start placing these elements, removing the green. I'm also blocking out roughly in Photoshop some of the other elements I need to uh, create. So we'll have a walkway going off and there'll be a central area in here. And this large blue blob is gonna be the big granddaddy bug and what we'll do eventually and this shows the area of the camera is we will uh, start high up here and slowly pan to reveal the whole extent of the bug oh crap what the hell is that We started out by doing the kawoosh in the pilot by using a giant water tank, putting the camera under the water tank. And they actually used several different methods. They, at one point, they put a small jet engine, the mouth of it into the water, and turned it on. And when we got that, that and that was uh, composited into the Stargate. They also dropped things in there to get different versions of it. But as time went on, we couldn't keep doing that because that was a very expensive costly, pain in the behind process to do. You're going to step through that. Fortunately, the wizard so far, digital domain, were able to figure out a way to duplicate that effect digitally in a 3D environment so that we could digitally move the camera around the kawush and have it go where we want. Over the course of Stargate, software has been developed um, by these great visual effects people to accommodate tracking points now. 
on the set so that we don't have to use motion control. They create the motion control uh, with our live action shot that we do. So that's been a, a huge breakthrough and has really uh, sort of taken the handcuffs off, off us and enabled us to do great shots. That and also having matte artists who are very detailed in their work and create the depth, the three-dimensional depth that we need to present a world out there in space that's believable. It's beautiful. I was looking at some, um, some visual effects for a show we did called Nemesis, where Thor's ship crashes into the ocean, and the subsequent shot had parts of that ship floating in, in the water, and the whole shot was CG. Our, our visual effects supervisor at the time, James Tishner, said to me, uh, said, you know, if you ever want to do a water show, and I, and I said, really, funny, funny you should say that, and I pulled out this outline, and I showed it to him, and he said, oh yeah, we could do that. The seventh address we successfully dialed led to a Stargate entirely submerged underwater. That doesn't seem possible. This was a very interesting shot where we used the camera to mimic the motion of the sub as it passed by. So what we actually did is we pushed the camera past our, uh, our uh, cast on set and then created a CG shell, the, the shell of the sub, to go around them. And you'll see in this next example sort of the various stages of how that was done. Using the camera in this way is kind of an innovative way of uh, creating motion out of a set that is basically static so that we don't have to push, you know, a big set around. One of the things we also had to do in this shot was add a lot of motion blur in as the ship passes by to try and simulate some of the diffusion through the dome, which was actually a CG dome, and then obviously the virtual world all around it. So let's have that look around. You can see here also in the background, there's a lot of virtual world there, and uh, uh, an amazing build, basically a 180 degree view, and uh, just peeping through the holes, because that set was actually open in the plate. We got to see the view of the actors and could position the, the ports, I guess they are, in the side of the ship perfectly. Wow, it is quite beautiful. When we uh, were doing the episode Serpent's Lair, I had killed the character of Chlorel. Now, because of the time lag and the way how long it takes to produce a, a television show, part one of that episode, Serpent's Grasp, had just aired. We could see from the fan reaction about the character, how much they loved seeing him back, how much they looked forward to future stories about him. And Jonathan had directed the episode, I had written the episode, and we just killed the guy. So Jonathan came up with this great idea, and that was, you know, I have a shot of uh, Apophis being ringed away, and we have a shot of Clarell, so instead of dying, we just cut the scene. And when Apophis escapes, we cut and paste Clarell and stuck him beside Apophis, and he escaped too. That wasn't the way it was written. That wasn't even the way it was shot, but that's the way it was edited. That was also a visual effect, of course, but that's a case of the post-production process changing the story. I think the hardest scenes to shoot, at least for the actors in particular, are scenes that involve blue screens or green screens, because so often they're acting with something that isn't there. We've done several episodes. We did one at the end of the third season called Nemesis, where there's thousands of these little mechanical bugs coming after them. Let's go, Carter! Those bugs were completely computer generated. They weren't there. The actors and the camera crew had to imagine where they were and frame everything that way, and the actors had to behave towards nothing. We did this shot where the four of us are lined up watching this crystal cave cave in on itself. Of course, it's not really happening in front of us, so they described the effect to us. Say, oh my God, it's phenomenal. Chill, knock. Direct translation, very cool. You're not gonna believe it when it caves in. And, oh. You know, so we want to see some of that in your faces. Because I guess I was the only one who took that direction to heart because they panned down the line and, you know, Christopher at that point was still 
very stoic teal. And Michael was going, and Rick was doing this. And I was like, and I looked like, you know, Cindy Brady, or, you know, that episode. Anyway, I won't go to the Brady Bunch, but I looked like Bambi in headlights, just. And when we saw the final cut, I was like, damn, you guys didn't react to that thing. I look like an idiot. And they were like, yeah, uh, sister. <laughs> so those kind of things. I've now learned to uh, not listen so much to directors when they tell me what's happening on the blue screen. <laughs> SG-1 is preparing for another big mission. Yes, and unfortunately, we can't have any unescorted civilians on base, so you'll have to log on some other time. With the proper clearance. Next time, a little advance warning would be nice. Right, sir. <laughs> <laughs>